from time immemorial. According to history, there are three stages for the struggle and fight for freedom. The first stage is when you realize and you are brave enough to ask for it and never get it. That leads us to the second stage, the fight for freedom. And history tells us when the fight for freedom is won, that's when you have to work even harder to preserve that freedom. If not, it will be taken away from you. So we say, freedom, peace, and justice now. So they had to find another function for themselves. And so we get the uh, advent of modern art. Uh, we get our Picassos and, and George's Brock, you know, and Salvador Dali. Uh, the whole um, uh, Matisse, you know, the whole development, you know, of modern art. Now, a lot of what Afro-American artists did, or even Haitian or African artists uh, do, a lot of it is often confused with uh, surrealism. Uh, and that is because the source of surrealism and uh, expressionism uh, and cubism comes from the same source, uh, the same basic uh, cultural and aesthetic resources that Afro-American artists or modern African artists are working with. That is, painting is a European form, unlike sculpture, which is, has an indigenous African uh, uh, tradition. But painting is a received form. So when Africans turn to painting uh, and, and, and call upon their maybe their traditional aesthetic uh, 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 resources, what you get is sort of what you see when you see uh, the work, say, Picasso's Cubist period. And that is because, as I said, uh, Picasso and Matisse and the early European modern artists were very much inspired by the African sculptures they saw in the Louvre. Now, Dr. Adimola is in that tradition but he is consciously working to try and find a neo-African aesthetic. That is, what does art look like uh, when it is developed by a modern artist who is looking to the traditional African traditions and sculpture for his aesthetic model? And, and what we get, of course, is what most people would see as abstract art. Now, there are many people, for instance, if you look at the work behind me, this is one of Dr. Adibola's uh, larger works, uh, and many people will look at this, and if, if you attempt to see it through the eyes of representational art, uh, it will be confusing. A lot of people say they don't understand a modern art. That is because they're looking at the wrong thing. Uh, the representational artist uh, basically depends upon certain techniques 
uh, the, the ability to create depth and perspective, uh, the ability to mix colors that are true to nature. In other words, the representational artist is trying to capture reality as closely as possible. In this sense, then, the representational painter is a lot like the classical instrumentalist. Uh, that is, that in classical music, the, object, uh, the objective of the instrumentalist is to render the score as accurately as they can. That is, to capture as accurately as they can the intentions of the composer. Modern art is more like jazz. And that is why, for instance, the abstract expressionists like Wilhelm de Kooning, you know, or Franz Klein, or any of them, or Jackson Pollock, they were all inspired by jazz, particularly by bebop, which is the movement which the uh, modern art uh, uh, movement in, in music, which was uh, contemporary, contemporaneous uh, with the uh, maturation of, um, of, of abstract expressionism. Uh, but here, it is the imagination that is, 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 is paramount, not rendering uh, true to form or whatever the object is as it appears in nature, but the artist's improvisational take on this. And of course, that is what jazz men do. Jazz men begin with a theme, but their objective is not to render uh, accurately what the, what the uh, composer has written, but to give their own particular take on this theme as they experience it at the time. Now, that is preeminently an act of the imagination. Now, this is not to say, as some people would suggest, that modern artists uh, do not possess, uh, do not, uh, um, possess uh, technique, that they're not well trained. Uh, that's not true. Uh, in the case of Dr. Adamola, uh, he has a style which is recognizable anywhere in the world, and his work has been exhibited everywhere in the world. Uh, but in, whenever you see an artist in any form, in any medium, or any genre who has managed to develop a style, well, you know right away that this is an artist who has mastered the medium because style is a function of mastery. Uh, when you hear jazz musicians play to the untutored ear, it sounds like they're playing anything that comes into their head. It's not true. What they're playing is structured. It's structured by the, as what Marcel says, the obstacles of rhythm, of, 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 uh, of chord changes, the harmonics, you know. Uh, it, it, it is, and it must tell a story. And the same thing is true with modern painting. It only appears to be uh, random. Even the closest we see, of course, to, to randomness is uh, Jackson Pollock. But Jackson Pollock was a very well-trained painter. So we will take a look at a couple of Dr. Adibola's, uh works here, some of the more, some I'm picking what I like, and then we're going to bring the artist on and ask him some questions about his career. But he has been extremely prolific, having produced thousands of works. Uh, he has been working as an artist. He says he dates his um, career as an artist from the time he sold his first painting, which was in 1963, at the very beginnings of the Black Arts Movement. That means that Dr. Adamola has been creating art for nearly a half century.